Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? So, um, so we've had a hard time here at the household. Um, so my youngest son, he had COVID about two and a half weeks ago or so. Um, and he recovered really quickly after a few days, didn't really have any problems. Um, he was sick, but not like super, super sick. So fortunately, my older son and I did not get exposed. Um, so he quarantined with my ex-husband for 10 days. And so um, I guess it was about Wednesday, which was about five days ago. He kind of like started developing a cough and um, like it just got worse day by day up until yesterday. It got so bad. So we went to urgent care and they just told us that he had a cold. Um, well, I wasn't so sure about that diagnosis, especially because they did not run any tests, which I was very upset with that, um, as we have a big RSV outbreak going on right now, um, especially down here in Texas. We're having um, a lot of COVID and RSV, and unfortunately, a lot of children are getting COVID and RSV together, and that's accounting for a lot of the pediatric hospitalizations right now. So long story short, we... I ended up taking uh, taking my son back to, I took him to the emergency room this morning because he woke up this morning and he was so horribly congested, he was having trouble breathing. And um, as a parent, you know, um, those of you that are parents, you know how scary that is if you've ever had such a thing happen. And if you haven't, you can imagine, but just an absolutely horrific, terrifying thing to have, you know, your child just not wanting to eat or drink and just having trouble breathing and just having so much mucus and congestion in, in his chest it was just horrible so um so we had some more tests done and essentially he tested negative for rsv negative for flu and we came to the conclusion that he was diagnosed with uh, basically lingering COVID symptoms. So even though he doesn't technically have COVID anymore, he is still experiencing some effects of it because it can last for a really long time. And it can even last for up to 30 days or even potentially longer. So anyways, I'm going to share a few more things <laughs> that I am using and that I'm going to use as well. Things that I haven't even started using that I'm going to use. So, you know, with the COVID, there's really no one thing that's going to be magic. There really is not. And, you know, it's just you have to do the best you can and make sure that you are prepared. I can't stress that enough. Um, making sure that you are stocked up on just basic over-the-counter medications as well as very helpful supplements and antiviral supplements and teas and things of that nature. So we have been very fortunate. I have not gotten the covid my older son has not gotten it, um, although I think we've probably had it before at some point, but it's hard to say. So I did purchase some lemon oil today, essential lemon oil. I've talked about this before. Um, I think I did a whole video just on lemon oil, and you can look at that if you want to. But anyways, uh, lemon oil is really good for a lot of things, but it's also good for congestion. You can use it in a humidifier. And um, I am using a humidifier and I'm not going to show it to you right now because it's kind of bulky, but I also have it um, in the bedroom right now with my son to help him. So he kind of has like some croup type symptoms. And so we found out that a lot of what we're hearing that's so scary is actually more like up here, up higher and not so much in his lungs. So his chest x-rays were clear, which was really great news. And so we're so thankful for that. But very scary nonetheless so you definitely want to be prepared um and, but even if you're not you know you can um get yourself some some of this stuff you can order for delivery or have someone bring it to you or whatever so emergency immune support um this is kind of a given it's an obvious thing but a lot of people are really having great results with this right now so this is pretty basic and this one is the 1000 milligrams of vitamin C plus vitamin D and zinc. And so the last video I did when I was talking about what we used for my son's initial COVID infection, we were using a lot of, um, you know, vitamin D and elderberry and vitamin C and zinc. So vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C and elderberry are all very um, proven against really helping minimize the symptoms of COVID-19. 
So I'll go ahead and say like I always do that I'm not a doctor and this is just what we've used and what we're going to use and what we implemented and are implementing. And so every little bit helps and just doing your research and doing everything that you can is going to assist you in the long run. So this is Robitussin Naturals. So I purchased this one today as well. So this one um, is just honey, ivy leaf, and zinc. So this one does have zinc added to it, which is always nice. Um, so, you know, with children, there's not a whole lot you can give them at such a young age. Um, as far as you don't really want to give them a cough suppressant, especially if they're having like a chest infection or something like that, because it can keep them from expelling the mucus and stuff. So you can use like, um, kind of like natural expectorant, so to speak. So really, I mean, there's not a whole lot that you can safely use, but this is one that um, I've heard good things about. So I will say that. And um, I did a video on the Bio Relief um, CBD salve. And so I did do a specific video on this, um, but I do have our Bio Rains Bio Relief salve with the Rapid C CT technology. Um, so basically, it's it's just a CBD balm, but it also has um, it has some really great stuff in it. So it kind of essentially acts as like a vapor rub, if that makes sense. So you can use it like on your chest, and this is another great use for it as well. You can put it like on your throat if you're having sore throat, um, on the skin, on the outside of the neck, and you can use it, you know, a little bit maybe underneath your nose, very very tiny amount, and even like putting it on the feet. And a lot of people know. An old-fashioned natural remedy when you're having any kind of congestion is to or a cough you know is to put vapor rub on your feet or your child's feet and then put socks on overnight and that helps a lot and so it has helped a lot for me with both my kids as well so I have been using this along with a regular vapor rub and basically just combining the two but I do really like this stuff um, but yeah it has arnica it has um, Let's see, I can't pronounce that, menthol, handbag extract, and a few other things. But very clean ingredients, and it's just overall great product, very multi-purpose. So CBD also makes everybody feel better. And then lastly, um, just having your basic health tools, like this is an infrared thermometer. This is a really good thing to have. It's a little bit more pricey than a regular thermometer, but so worth it, especially if you have kids, you can carry this with you everywhere. I keep it in my purse and you just press the button and you don't even really have to get it on their skin, but it's really easy. It takes the temperature like instantaneously. This is a lifesaver. Okay, and then pulse oximeter, this is just a basic. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it, um, just in general, to have something like this, because you never know when you're gonna get sick and you might need to monitor yourself, especially um, in these days that we are experiencing. So, yeah, so this helps a lot. However, um, they're not always 100% accurate, especially on small kids. So um, you might want to look into that and definitely do your research, but it's helpful to have. Nevertheless, very helpful. And it definitely eases my mind when I can use it and see that everything's okay. So it just monitors your uh, heart rate and your oxygen saturation. So you definitely want to have that if at all possible. And then lastly, let's see here. Stethoscope. I know it's funny, um, but this is so helpful because you can listen in to your chest, listen to your heart, and the lungs, the back, and the front. So when you're listening to the lungs, you want to check the back and the front. So, but you can use this for yourself or your kids. And also when I was pregnant with both my kids, I used a stethoscope and I would listen to my stomach, uh, my uterus, and I was able to hear so much cool stuff. And um, so yeah, if you're pregnant or planning to become pregnant, you might want to consider getting yourself a stethoscope. Um, at first, obviously you're not gonna hear anything, but later as the pregnancy progresses, especially in the latter part of your second trimester and your third trimester, it's really cool. You can hear a lot of really awesome stuff. So anyways, so yeah, these are just some extra things I wanted to put out there and talk about um, that are just really comforting to have. And if you're a caregiver and you're caring for someone that has 
COVID-19. Um, these are all things that you can use for yourself as well and just helping monitor yourself if you need to um, or you know just helping to boost your immune system and take care of yourself. So anyways, um, I hope this help, helps you guys. Um, yeah, I mean it's really scary when your kid is um, having such difficulty um, and he's such a healthy child too. I mean he never really seems to have much, he doesn't get sick very often. So this has been a really hard pill to swallow just to see the harsh effects and the harsh reality of um, kind of what we're going through as a society. So anyways, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.